Hello friends. Today we will learn about object oriented programming in C++. Let's start with programming paradigms. Programming paradigms are the way to classify programming languages based on their features. Majorly, it is classified in two ways: imperative programming and declarative programming. Imperative programming is like how you do something and declarative programming is more like what you do. Imperative explicitly tells the computer how to accomplish task by describing sequence of steps and declarative describes what a program should accomplish without knowing how it will be done. Imperative programming is further classified in two parts procedural and object oriented programming. Now what is procedural or structured programming? Structured programming is design which focuses on process. It follows top down approach. Structured programming allows programmer to code a program by dividing the whole program into small units or modules. C, Pascal, Algol, Cobol and Basic are examples of structured programming. Though structured programming is simple to code and easy to understand but are less flexible. They do not provide data abstraction and security to data as compared to object oriented programming. Now, what is OOP? OOP stands for object oriented programming. It is designed to focus on data. Object oriented programming follows bottom up approach. There are mainly four features of object oriented programming. First, encapsulation second abstraction third inheritance and fourth is polymorphism let us discuss all these features one by one in detail first is encapsulation it is a process of wrapping of data in methods in a single unit data is the data member and methods are the member function which are wrapped into the unit known as class class is a container which collects variables and methods whereas object is instance of class class is just a logical entity or a blueprint which takes no space in memory whereas object is both logical and physical entity which takes memory at runtime let us understand classes and objects with real world example Objects like elephant, sheep, tiger, dog belongs to animal class. Each object has state and behavior. For example, a dog has state color, name, height, age, as well as behavior barking, eating and sleeping. Similarly, lemon, apple, banana and grapes all belong to class fruit and have different states and behavior. Grapes have different state like color, shape, size and behavior like its cost as compared to the other fruits. Now, this is the syntax for class and object. So, to declare a class, we will use the keyword class followed by the name of the class. Then we will have the body of the class which includes the access specifier. By default, the classes are private. Then we will declare the data members and the member functions in the class. The class will be ended by the semicolon. Next is the object declaration. So for object, we will declare the name of class first, followed by the number of objects you want to declare, separated by comma and ending with the semicolon. Now this is the simplest code for your class addition of two numbers. First we will be including the header files followed by the initialization or declaration of your class with the help of keyword class and the name of class is addition. This is the start of your body of class. Now here first you will be declaring your data members. Here the data members are A, B and sum. They are of type integer they have been declared as private here if you do not write private the class is by default private 
Next, we are declaring all the member functions as public. Here, there are three member functions. First is input function, in which you are getting the input from the users by declaring C out enter to numbers and C in for getting the variables A and B. Next is void add function. In add function, you are getting the sum of A plus B in your sum variable. Then is the void output function. This is for printing the result. C out sum of two number is sum. This is the end of your class. Now in the main function, first you will be declaring or initializing your object with the help of the name of your class that is addition, then object name. Dot operator is used to call the functions. Now here we are calling your all three functions. With the help of output, we will see how they are been invoked. Now when ob.input is called, it will call input function. See, enter to number is been printed and the user has given two values 10 and 20. Then ob.add is called where the sum of 10 and 20 is done and is stored in the sum variable. Finally, ob.output is called where it is printing your output as sum of two number is 30. So this is how we implement our classes. As you can see here, this is the more simpler form of your previous program. Everything is declared in one function itself from entering data to adding to printing output. So never be afraid of long codes. It is just how you as a programmer want your program to be. See the output. It is same as of before. I hope you got an idea of writing a C++ code now. Now next feature is abstraction. Abstraction refers to providing only essential information about data to the outside world, hiding the background details or implementation. For example, ATM machine. We all perform operations on the ATM machine like cash withdrawal, money transfer, retrieve mini statement, etc. But we might not know internal details about ATM. Similarly, when we drive a car, we only know how to drive cars, but its internal functionality knowledge might not be known. Now, how abstraction is achieved in a class? It can be achieved by using access specifiers like public, private, and protected. If you declare your data public, it will be accessible both inside and outside the class. If private, it will not be accessible outside but only inside the class. And if declared protected, it will be accessible only in inherited classes. Let's take an example. Here your data members, that is A, B and sum, are private. If you try to access them outside the class, you will get an error. Data members are private and are not accessible outside the class. They can only be accessed either declared public or by using them in functions and calling that functions. Next feature is inheritance. It is the mechanism in which one class acquires the property of another class. Let's take an example. A child inherits the trait of his or her parents. There are two types of classes, derived class and base class. The derived class is the class which inherits from another class and base class is the class being inherited from. Let us take an example. Suppose we have three characters, a math teacher, a footballer and a businessman. As a person or human, they all inherit some common properties like walking and talking. However, they all have some special skills. A math teacher can teach maths. A footballer can play football and a businessman can run a business. Now instead of making all three classes and adding functions again and again, we can have one common base class named as person. 
in which you can add the common properties like talk, walk and eat. Using inheritance, you don't have to implement the same code for talk, walk and eat each time for three different classes that is maths teacher, footballer and businessman. They can directly inherit from the class person. However, you can add their special skills as a function in their respective classes like maths teacher can teach maths, footballer can play football and businessman can run a business. Inheritance help you to create one base class as person in which all common characteristics of person can be added and can be used by all three different classes. So inheritance facilitates reusability. Now this is the syntax for your inheritance. Here first you have declared the base class with keyword class followed by the name of your base class. This is the body of your base class. Here the base class ends. Now we will declare the derived class with the keyword class, name of your derived class, then a colon, followed by the access specifier, which can be public, private or protected. Then the name of your base class from where this particular class is been derived. Then we include the body of your derived class and the derived class ends. Now the last feature of OOP is polymorphism. Poly means many and morphism means form that is many forms. Let's take a real life example of polymorphism. Man is only one but he takes multiple roles like he is a dad to his child, he is an employee, a salesperson and many more. Another example is if you ask animal to speak, they speak in different ways like dog barks, duck quacks, but we call it as a speak for both. In this example, we can see the animal class, which is the base class having the member function animal sound. Now we see there are two derived classes pig and dog, which has same name of member function animal sound animal sound because sound as a characteristic of animal will be the same but their forms will be different like pig says vv and dog says bow bow in the main function you see my animal object is of class animal my pig object is of class pig my dog is the object of dog class here we are calling your class member function this is my animal dot animal sound this will call your base class see the output is the animal makes sound this has been printed next it is calling my pig dot animal sound it will print the pig says vv this statement then it is calling my dog dot animal sound which is the dog says bow wow. Hence polymorphism helps reduce complexity by allowing the same interface to be used to access a journal class of actions. Now concluding what we have learned today. Programming paradigm, structured programming and the features of OOPS. Thanks for watching the video. Please press the like button and for more technical videos, please subscribe my YouTube channel.